Hi, I'm David Carboni. I'm one of the developers of Scalar, and today we're really excited to share Scalar 2 on the iPad. Um, it's a fully featured redesign from the ground up, and it really does embody everything that Scalar means for me, which is the ability to make music, um, open multiple Scalars, uh, write entire tracks, perform live, all in a mobile platform made possible thanks to Apple and the iPad. Um, today, this is an overview video. Um, iPad, a scaler on the iPad is going to be launched very soon. Um, it'll be a free purchase um, and you'll be able to use most of the features and then you can unlock all of the features with a one-time in-app purchase. Today, I'm gonna to be using the excellent Roland F701. I love this digital piano because it has MIDI in and out and it has the ability to route audio directly to it, which means it makes it totally flexible with Scalar. Um, for those of you who don't know, Scalar is a an award-winning music theory workstation, they call it, which enables you to, it can basically listen to what you're playing, be it uh, notes or chords, and suggest scales, uh, chords, and bass lines and melodies to go with what you're playing. So um, I hope you enjoyed the overview video. Let's start to have a look at Scalar on the iPad. Okay, so here we have iPad. What I'm going to do is I'm going to... Um, it's now connected to the Roland F701. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go straight into detect mode and I'm going to ask Scalar to detect what it is that I'm playing. So let's say, for example, I play some kind of melody. Um, and if I come out of detect mode there, it's correctly told me that I'm either playing the C minor scale or I could be playing the D Locrian mode scale as well. There's a bunch of different scales it suggests and it can tell you how many notes, chords and keys um, that belong to that scale or how compatible what you played was with that scale. You can listen to the scales and then you can choose a scale. So uh, let's go for another example. Let's reset the state here by going up to the S logo and clear the state. And let's say I'm going to play a bunch of chords. OK, great. Um, so now you can see Scalar has correctly detected the chords and told me what I played, a G flat major, an A flat sus2, G flat sus2, and an E flat minor seventh with an added 11th. What's really cool is I always know that I like playing the black keys um, but I'm not entirely sure why or why I prefer that sound. And here it's kind of telling me, well, you could be in a blues hexatonic, a major pentatonic, a F sharp mix a lot in. But let's keep things simple. Let's say, okay, I'd like to be in the G sharp minor scale, a uh, major scale, excuse me. Now, the, the, the great thing about the iPad is how tactile it is. You can just, you know, press anywhere, um, drag or select any chords. In this instance, I want to select the four chords it detected me playing, and I'm going to bring it into section C, which is effectively our progression builder. You can bind any section by hitting the bind buttons here, A, B, or C, and what that allows is that you can see it, it highlights an area here and enables me to play those chords with one finger. So now, I've played what were fairly complex chords and I would never know how to play them again unless I'm a keyboardist and I've now assigned them to one finger. There's so many different things you can do in Scalar. You can come into Keys Lock and you can go into one of the many extensions or modes or profiles I should say in Keys Lock and that will now lock all the keys you play with your right hand over to the chords you're triggering with your left hand. So with no experience in music theory or, or, or piano playing, I know that looking at these green numbers here, anything I play here will be locked to the chord that I play. So with one finger, I can trigger a chord and then I can play an appropriate melody. The next chord. And of course you can do them with two fingers as well, which makes some really nice harmonies. Let's say, for example, I wanted to extend on this chord progression. I can go into suggest mode. So here's my original chords. And I can go into suggest mode and Scalar will suggest either tonally 
or per scale, per scale meaning it will fit chords that do fit my G flat major scale, or to make it a little bit more interesting, I'll go tonal, which basically says the blue chords will fit with the scale and the grey chords are going to not be part of the scale but will fit your chord progression because they share some notes. You can actually minimise the movement and auto detect. So what that will do is every time I select another chord, so let's say I really like this chord here, so I can find chords that I'm liking, Okay, so now I've basically just gone through, selected chords that I think work, um, and it's been updating. So it's now said, well, actually, because you had your auto detect on, you've now populated your chord progression, and you are now in F sharp mixolydian mode. So you can see I've come up with a, a completely unique and great chord progression. Let's go straight to the, the standard chords of F-sharp mixolydian mode. You can turn on voicing lock and there's a bunch of profiles in here. And what they do is they thicken the chords and keep all the voices together. So it's a really nice way to just instantly get these kind of nice thicker chords just by playing. Um, the, uh, the diatonic chords of that scale. If you're looking for inspiration, Scalar is full of many different ways to come up with chord progressions. Obviously, you can go to chord mode and you can basically in chord edit mode and you can choose from the circle of fifths and you can start listening to chords and auditioning chords and pulling them down. But what we have here is, if we go back to the main page, you'll see that we've got scales, which you can choose your own scales, songs and artists. Um, songs are chord sets that uh, we have created in-house and we've got a bunch of um, artists and producers to create some really authentic chord sets. So they're not um, taken from any online sources. They're all original, all specifically for Scalar. Each particular chord set, if you look in a bossa nova, you get so many options. There's, a, I think, probably about 500 chord sets, but they're covering most genres of music. Let's, let's have a look at a few here. Let's go 70s, funk and soul. Let's go um, number one and let's choose a sound that might go with that. Let's come into orchestra and let's go to staccato strings. And let's choose future bass one. Okay, so I'm going to come back out. Um, let's have a look at R&B. Let's go R&B 5 and let's choose a, an appropriate sound. Let's go to one of the piano and let's go vintage keys. Um, okay, let's try something a little bit more orchestral. Let's go or orchestra let's choose the um, string ensemble which I love within Scalar um, and let's go to cinematic so you can imagine we're doing some composition here looking for some inspiration we're creating something epic yeah really lovely Common chord progressions is a really good one because they're kind of commonly voiced or common um, typical chord progressions, if you like, and lots of variations from within. So you can look at the categories and go joyful, dramatic, and so forth. Um, and obviously they tend to lend themselves towards more, let's say, pop music. So let's try, um, let's have a go at pop three and let's get a kind of a more paddy sound. Let's go to one of the synth sounds um, and let's go dream on.
Yeah, so you can see there was quite a few chord sets in that um, in that particular progression, which <laughs> means you can make so many tunes from it. Uh, finally, let's have a look at um, something a bit more, what would they say, underground. Let's go, uh, let's try, let's try techno too. So you can see there's many different songs, I mean there's hundreds of songs for you to choose from and get the appropriate sound and you're away and use the audio bus example which we'll show you in a second and you, you suddenly make an entire tracks on the go. Um, let's have a look at some of the artist chord sets. I'm going to go to artists um, and you can see there we've, we've got lots and lots of you know really world famous artists from um, The Temper Trap to MJ Cole to Carl Cox to CC Rogers. Um, let's uh, choose MJ's chord sets. I love his chord sets. Uh, he wrote these for a very famous artist, but I'm probably not allowed to say, but they're, they're absolutely fantastic. Um, and if I say go into one of the hybrid sounds, and I'm going to choose hybrid orchestra. <laughs> Yeah, really beautiful chord set. Um, I'm going to go to another one of my favourite artists, and that's C.C. Rogers. Um, great guy, and uh, one of my all-time favourite tunes, which some of you might actually recall. Uh, I'm going to choose the grand piano for this. Was uh, uh, Well, you'll get it. Here's the chord sets. You can obviously move your chord sets down. Um, make some adjustments. Um, you can, you know, right click on any chord and come into the chord edit mode and you can actually change, you know, the notes of the chords. Scalar will update and you can always just save. You can save, export your chord set, um, export your full session. There's many different things that you can do. So it's really f very flexible. Let's say we're going to go into the Temper Trap, shall we? Um, very well known uh, uh, platinum award winning rock band. And let's choose. Uh, let's get a guitar sound. There's plenty of guitar sounds in Scatter, but let's go steel acoustic. So right now we're playing. Um, one of their chord sets. Um, what's really cool about Scatter is you can you can begin to kind of create songs. So you could you could drag these guys in down to um, um, section C. Uh, and now we might be able to take advantage of one of the modes called pad modes where we can kind of write different sections if you like. Let's go to their other chord set, the C, and let me just grab um, the first uh, four chords and I'm going to shift right click if you like and I'm going to add to a new pattern. Um, and if you have a look now, I've got the first chord set and the second chord set. Um, and I could right click on one of the patterns and I could, you know, call it whatever I wanted to. So I could say, okay, let's call this the uh, chorus. Uh, and you can just keep writing um, your own tracks. I think one of the great benefits of having Scalar on the iPad for me is the ability to host multiple Scalars in a mobile platform, controlling anything I want. Um, here I'm using AUM, which is the great little audio mixer. I can use any audio mixer. Um, and I'm hosting four scalars at the one time. So if I, if I hold one note, it'll play all four scalars. Um, I could actually assign it to play any of the third party instruments um, that come uh, that are available on the iPad, but also any synth that I've got here in my studio. So it's, it's really ultimately flexible. And this is where the power of scalar comes into its own. Uh, I'm just going to solo the first instance of scalar and open it up for you. And all I've got here is I've got scalar and I've got the internal sound, the wide pad, and I've chosen synth wave 16 um, under songs. And this is the chord sets. So, and you can see AUM triggering it here. Um, now, if I close that, what I can do is I can open up a second scalar, which I've already done, and this is another scalar, same Synthwave 16 chord set, but here I've opened up a performance. Now, performances are ways that musicians here have come into the studio and written different types of strumming, performances, phrases, rhythms, basses, melodies, sequences, and strum sequences. You can have a look through the manual to find what they are, but they're really flexible interpretations of how a musician might play your chord. Right now, I want a bass line, so I've gone into bass lines. I've chosen Synthwave, 
bass because I've got a synthwave chord set, makes sense, and I've chosen synthwave 6. And if we have a listen to that now... So just on its own, it will play a whole um, quite elaborate bass line, but I can just move also move through the chords to make it compatible with the chord progression. And you can see I could even go through it fast. I can take advantage that that bass line does change the whole time. So it's really flexible. And of course, there's hundreds of different phrases and sequences. I'm going to bring in a third uh, scalar here. Again, Synthwave 16. This time I've chosen Distance. So yeah, probably to note that on the second scalar I actually had chosen saw bass, the internal sound. Now I've got a synth sound called uh, distance um, and we've pulled up a different performance. This time we've gone into sequences uh, and we've gone synth sequences, makes sense, and we've gone synth 3 and we've, we've used synth 3. Um, and now let's have a listen to that on top. Cool. Um, so uh, as a final one, I've got a f another scalar. Um, this time I've gone for an ostinato in the sequence, um, which is kind of like a repetitive repetitive phrase. And if I just unsolo the lot, now you can see I've got all four scalars um, and I can just play those notes. And what I really love about Scalar is the way you can perform. Now, I could have latched those notes, so I can just hit it once and it'll continuously play. So if I open up a Scalar and I come into the Settings menu, I've got Global Latch. And if I turn that on, what that does is that means that uh, Scalar will latch to a note. That is, I could just hold a note. And just turn that note off. Now this enables me to perform. So here, just in an audio mixer, I've got a filter assigned. Yeah, so it's a really cool way of just basically assigning multiple scalars using the different performances within scalars to make all types of tunes. This is just scalar using only its internal instruments, and there we're using synthwave. We could have done pop, where we could have um, used pianos, strings, orchestral arrangements, and so forth. But it's just a fabulous way to get creative on the move, make your tunes, and then, of course, you can export this to your door. Um, or you can export the entire session to use in any other iPad door environment. Okay, just want to look at some of the guitar functionality in Scalar iPad. Let's choose a guitar sound. You can say build your own chord progression here. And you can switch over to the guitar view. And we've also got chord charts. And what that means is any chord you play will now show you where your fingers can be on the fretboard really helpful for um, learning how to play the learning how to play the guitar um, there are several other pages too if I clear stay and let's go and choose an orchestral sound let's come over to orchestra and choose brass ensemble um, and we can right from the get-go we can come into the modulation page um, and we can choose one of the modulation presets. And this just is a way to kind of write music outside of traditional theory using one of the great composers kind of theory. So here I've got a C major chord. And now this is suggesting, according to that theory that we've had recreated and implemented by artists here at Scalar, uh, we can move to any chord. Uh, 
Um, let's clear, let's start that again. So you can hear now it's tracked what I've done um, and I can bind that. Oopsie, I'm trying to move that a little bit too far. And I can bind that and now I can actually. Let's just put that C major to end with. I can select all of those and I can click on them. Um, come to other, redetect them, and if I come into the main section, I've got a new chord progression. You can see that I'm in D Persian mode two, which is clearly a scale I never would have got to, but with the help of scaling, clicking around, I've come up with a really unique chord progression. Um, there are other uses to the modulation page. Let's say I clear the stay come back and choose another sound. Let's go for, um, let's go for another synth sound. Um, let's go Celestial Existence and let's go, just to make this pretty obvious, let's go into Songs and go back to the, um, the Common Progressions. And let's say I've gone a Common Progression Joyful and we'll go for something fairly simple. I'm gonna grab uh, these chords here. Sounds nice and joyful to me. Um, I can come into the modulation and I can say, here's my progression, there it is, and here's the circle of fifths. And let's say it's telling me, well, I'm in currently in the C major scale. I wanna go somewhere close. Let's go D major. If we click on D, what it'll do is it'll say, here was your progression. This is what it would sound like in D major. So that's really cool. So I've now been able to modulate to a different key without understanding music theory and all. And really, knowing music theory, I know that to get from one scale to the other, I need to modulate. I need a, a pivot chord and a bunch of chords that which will send me there. And Scalar, based on the artists that have come into the studio and help us recreate all of these kind of modulations, have given us suggestions. And it's really clever. So we might be here. And now we might want to go. And now we're in our new key. Yeah, so loads of different ways for Scalar to help us create chord progressions, come up with new um, uh, sounds and melodies. Yeah, so in a nutshell, that's Scalar 2 on the iPad. Um, we're really excited to get it into your hands. It's, it's such a lovely environment to work with, and it's really great to come up with ideas and then export and use in your, um, in your session, in your door, on your desktop, or in another program within iPad. Um, there's plenty um, more to know if you're new to Scalar, so we encourage you to watch the Scalar 2 videos because it's all relevant. Um, we're looking forward to getting it into your hands soon, and we'd like to thank you for supporting Scalar 2.